Hi all, welcome to Funder 360 English and I am Professor Anup Matthew and today we are going to start a new series on currency trading. Why currency? We know that currency trading is not that much popular among the securities markets. So why so? The main reason is the lesser volatility when compared to equity as well as uh, other markets. Moreover, the knowledge on currency trading on public domain is relatively very less. So the common man is somewhat less privileged, less know-how about the currency markets. So in a five episode series, we are going to go for a full-fledged tutorial on currency trading. Stay tuned. So in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about what is currency trading, the introduction of currency trading, the underlying principles, in what all ways we can trade currency, what are the currencies available for trading, where we have to trade, what we have to trade, when we have to trade and the bare minimum capital you need to invest as well as how we can optimize your return on investment. So. We know that uh, the currency trading is not that much popular. The majority of the people who have the DMAT account, they even haven't activated their currency segment at all. Majority of the currency trade is being taken place there in the NSC currency exchange. And that is legal also. The main problem here is you can find a lot of illegal currency trading platforms. As I told you, that all are illegal. You can find a lot of apps also. Instantly, you can just on the, get into the ticker and just book, book profit or loss, whatever it is, get out. Or even some apps that gives the flexibility for you to invest and take the overnight positions also. But unfortunately, all those things are illegal. But when the platform offered by NFC, that is very much similar to that of your equity or derivative platforms. That is legal also. So in this episode, we are going to discuss about the introduction of currency markets. So the first question is, what are currency markets? So currency markets or forex market, the forex markets are, are where traders trading currencies. So unlike most of the financial markets, which primarily include institutional and individual investors, the currency market basically comprise multiple players. We know that in equity markets, the majority of the decisions as well as the guidance or direction of the market is decided by the institutional players. But here you can find a lot of other players also, a lot of other investors, a lot of other traders also. So let's have a quick preview of some of the common transactions that occur in the currency or forex market. The first one is a traveler who is planning to visit some overseas country. For example, if someone going from India to France and gets Indian rupee converted to euros. This kind of transaction also can be classified under the forex. Second one is assume that an online shopper located in America wants to buy some spices from India. So he need to convert US dollar to Indian rupee to pay for the purchase. That's also a forex transaction. Another occurrence is the central banks across different countries. They often convert huge sums of local currencies to foreign currencies with regard to their reserves of the lending schemes. That's the third type of transaction. And the fourth one, that's what mainly we are looking into. That is the traders. They take advantage of currency pair movements and attempt to make profit. For example, by US dollar, by using Indian rupee, for example, at 76 rupee and sell at 76 rupee 10 paise. You got 10 paise profit. Similarly, short sell also, you sell at 76 rupees US dollar and buy at 75 rupees 90 paise. That's also profit. That's what traders do. Now let's have a look on what are the basic characteristics of currency markets. The characteristics of currency market is somewhat different from that of the equity markets. The first one is the currency markets are unregulated and over the counter markets are many. We know that we are going to trade in NNC currency market, but over the counter trade, right from just changing from just like an hand borrowing things that also taken place, illegal markets are there, everything are there. So as 
we have seen the share market and the derivative markets are all our exchange regulated markets but the forex market has no central marketplace like any exchange that you have to keep it in mind while you do any currency trades so this means the forex market trades as well as the transactions are conducted electronically even over the counter through computer networks between the traders and transacting parties located at different parts of the world even offline transactions also possible so we can't anticipate or we can't predict the price movement just by seeing the volume itself the second character is its liquidity the currency market includes uh, the players of different kinds that we know that right right from the individuals to companies or banks or any other financial institutions so naturally the volume of trades that occur in this market is also significantly very high so statistics shows that uh, the forex market records over five trillion dollars of currency is being converted on a daily basis just imagine how huge is that and because of this kind of volume there's a great liquidity in the forex market in fact it's a most liquid financial market the third characteristic is its volatility it's very much volatile so with the volume of trader being very high it's naturally the price also changes very frequently so there are billions of dollars being converted into forex market dollars means it's us dollars and what does that lead to yes obviously it results in a very high level of volatility price trends can move in either direction and they can move swiftly this can be either a good thing or a bad thing for the traders who generally speculate the movements but still if you can do your trade at the right time right place with the right technicals this is one of the easiest way to get benefits with lesser risk because generally majority of the forex players are range bound in nature the fourth characteristic is that the trades usually taken place in pairs for example it's a us dollar inr currency pair indian uh, rupee currency player that means the us dollar is the base currency that means that's what you are going to buy and the inr is the caught currency that means that's the currency you are going to sell you are giving or you are selling indian rupee and buying dollars you sell indian rupee buy dollars that's what usd inr currency pair so when you are buying the usd inr pair you are actually buying the usd and selling the indian rupee conversely just the reverse also when you are selling the usd inr pair you are selling the us dollar and buying the indian rupee fifth characteristic is it provides an array of derivative products the forex market offers traders as well as the speculators a wide range of derivative products to choose from to be more specific you can trade in forward contracts futures options or even currency swaps everything in this market but in india the fdo of currency pairs are much popular the last one may be the most important characteristic is basically the currency market is open for 24 hours though our nsc currency market is not open for 24 hours but you should keep it in mind that the overnight currency markets are running around the world when compared to stock market we know that stock market the trades will take place only from 9 o'clock to 3 30. after that the transaction is not at all taking place there is no over the counter sales or we are not going to sell or buy that from us or anything nothing like that happens but here though the nsc exchange closes the currency pair trades will take place in some other place some other geographical area on some other platforms so the very next day when the market opens that may reflect on the currency pair that you are holding so we have seen that uh, the forex or currency market is a bit different from the equity markets or some other financial markets they have its own features basically all are good and they also use a set of jargons that you have to keep it in mind a few jargons a few associated jargons a few associated terminologies certain words that you have to understand and you should learn that all things we shall discuss in the next episode so don't miss any episode stay tuned see you in the next episode till then bye from my notebook